Hey, this is Chuck, and you are listening to Fans with Bands, the podcast where we talk to the fans and the bands they dig about life, music, and whatever the hell else we want to talk about. Today on Fans with Bands, we're talking to the Caudell Brothers and Jeff Jenkins. Check it out. Hey, this is Chuck with Fans with Bands. I'm talking to Mike and Phil of Caudell Brothers Music and Jeff Jenkins. How are you guys doing? Excellent. Excellent. So Doing great. Yeah, awesome. Cool. You know, I was, <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, just talking to Mike before we got started that it's been like a, a couple of hot minutes since I've seen you guys. Um, Jeff, I think I ran into you in, in uh, when you first moved to Ann Arbor, maybe like five years ago. I don't know. Or six. 2017. Yeah. 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 Oh, shit. So it's been even longer. Yeah, so dude. that was the last time I saw you. <laughs> Yep. And and you're right here in town with me. And Mike yep. was at the Speed God show, which I think was the Avenue in 2016. So that's going yes. on. Yeah. Well, you guys played after the yep. minor played. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. And actually, uh, I haven't. It's it's funny. I was thinking about uh, when I was this opportunity when we were ready to put the song out. I said, "What's the last time I put music out?" <laughs> And it was the Speed God demo. It was in 2013. Oh, man. Holy crap. So, yeah. <laughs> so it's been 11 yeah. years. Holy oh, yeah. Shit. Wow. <laughs> and I was telling Phil that I get, I get to meet him uh, virtually. So anyway, guys, <laughs> thank you so much for being on Fans of Bands. Uh, Jeff, you had reached out to me and you know told me about the collaboration project you were working with Mike and Phil on, um, the song um, Creation Transcended. And... I I was lucky enough to get a, a an advanced copy of that thing. Holy crap! What a tune you guys have created. <laughs> I mean, it's it, it was it was mesmerizing. This mesmerizing progressive metal tune, tons of power, great melodies, all these little nuances. I I found myself like the very first time I listened to it, I was I was pulled into it, and then I just wanted to keep going back to it because there's I mean one it's a long song and you you can. You can just get into different aspects of the, you know, the melody that your guys is playing, Jeff, your vocal performance. I mean, all those things, they all come out. It, it's a fabulous tune. Um, so thank anyway, you. Yeah. Thank you. So how did, how did this collaboration start? I, I, I'm hoping this is going to be an awesome story. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so I had actually started writing the song back in 2022 which is the last time February of 2022 is actually the last time Mike and I put out anything substantial onto YouTube. And I, I like wrote it in a, in a fit of inspiration inside of Mike's living room. He remembers the exact <laughs> moment when I finished it. Um, and then we kind of just sat on it. I went through some job transitions and stuff like that, just different things that kind of get in the way of yeah. doing doing something like this, a nine minute progressive metal feat. And we were just starting to uh, kind of talk about getting back into things and recording. And I think um, Mike and I actually had the rhythm tracked. So we had the guitar rhythm tracked. Um, and I believe jeff you just hit mike up and asked if we were working on anything because you were like getting the juices going and you just wanted to find something to be on yeah i think i was just putting out clips of me starting to do vocals and stuff again and i think uh mike and i somehow ended up messaging one another and he was kind of like hey do a song with us. And I said, send me a song. Cause that's, that's usually my first filter for anybody that's like, let's do a thing. I'm like, cool. Send me some, <laughs> you don't ever hear from them. And you go, cool. Let me work on what I was doing. <laughs> but dude, I'm serious. It was like five minutes later, Mike sent me this eight and a half minutes long song. And I listened to it for a second and it's all done in, in guitar, uh, guitar pro. So it's all like MIDI stuff. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> you know, I, I, it was it was beyond me like legitimately uh you know i'm I'm totally gonna blow smoke up their ass about it but it was it was beyond me like i really had never i, I mean, we can dig into that if you want but yeah. i had never uh been given something like this and been you know given free reign um 
with something that was so well thought out. Usually when people are that thought out about it, at least yeah. in my experience, they're pretty protective of the the sound they already have. So, <laughs> you know, I mean, it was easy. I, I thought it was very easy coming where, you know, I was like, yeah, let's do a song. That sounds awesome. Send me one. Boom. There's a yeah. song. And then let's, <laughs> you know, that was almost a year ago. Holy crap. Uh, yeah. We've been, we've yeah. been off and on working on the song for like a year. Wow. wow. Um, you know, but that's kind of, you know, maybe that's another conversation to have, but like that's kind of the, the beauty of the independent yeah, well, route. <laughs> I mean, I am interested in that, like how the song already, I mean, because it sounds like, you know, like Phil, you, you came up with an idea, you guys laid out this, the structure, the basic structure of song, but where did it go from there? It sounds like you've been tweaking on it for a while. Did you, um, like, you know, Jeff, how much were you involved in the, in the, the tweaking of that arrangement or was it primarily Mike and Phil doing the arranging and then you came in to like say, Hey, I think you could do this or that or what, right? How did that work? Uh, I mean, you know, you guys by all means, you know, share from your perspective as well. But, uh, I think there was one part I listened to the song over and over and over again. Uh, and I kept coming to this one part and I was like, this sounds horrible. <laughs> and I, and I, and I hit the, I hit the guys up and I was like, Hey man, <laughs> this part's not doing it for me, <laughs> you know? And then, uh, I was met with very warm and welcome criticism. However, like, you know, there was, there, there was this whole thought process, the theory behind it that yeah. Phil, you know, started telling me about. And I'm kind of like that hearing that side of it makes me want to figure out how to make this work for me right you know yeah. like if i'm assuming it's worked for you guys for <laughs> you know a couple of years <laughs> i but i yeah. but i did it i didn't understand it sonically i really did it um i don't know theory i you know i play guitar and, and, and do vocals and stuff but like i don't know anything about theory so these guys start talking about that stuff and it's like it, it, i don't yeah. I, I don't follow <laughs> i don't follow <laughs> but uh no the the only the only tweak i think that we did to the structure of the song once I got involved, was we extended the part? Uh, yeah, just before the first guitar solo, you kind of had like a a lyrical idea where you wanted it to just be like almost a spoken word. So mm, it was easy yeah. enough to accommodate for you just by opening up that space of time for you to put that in and then segue right into a guitar solo. Yeah, and and I think that we even messed around with the order of of that change and we all like instinctually gravitated to the same the same setup for it uh it was like I, I like that one better me too me too great that's it moving on and i think that's it i mean what mike sent me in in guitar pro it's not like it was something they were trying to figure out in guitar pro like they wrote a song yeah. and they tabbed it out in guitar pro like <laughs> you know yeah. so the, so the song's been written uh the way that it is right now i yeah. mean at least since i've I've been a part of it, except for extending one little section. That's crazy. Mm. I, I really wish the moment Phil came over with his buddy to, they were supposed to help me with something. And if you can picture this, like in a movie where <laughs> everything else in the world around Phil is just moving at high speed, <laughs> but he's on the laptop with formulas, just going across <laughs> the world. Like he stood sedentary on my couch for at least eight hours. <clears throat> and then finally he's like, I'm done, and then he just <laughs> left. <laughs> Wait a minute. So, so, so I'm, I'm like, I'm very curious. How, what, what were you doing, Phil? I mean, were you like composing this like just by the notes that you wanted without an instrument in hand? Yeah. So I write all of my music from the laptop. Holy fuck! And, and <laughs> so, yeah. <I'm> wrong. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, um, I mean. One thing is I'm like Jeff said, I'm very theory minded, right? So yeah. if I have an idea in my head, I can usually, I don't have perfect pitch. So maybe I can't tell like what notes I'm hearing, but I can definitely tell like what scale <laughs> I want out of it. Yeah. Right. So if I'm, if I'm thinking of a, of something, I can generally tell like that, that'll be using a Lydian like mode or a Phrygian dominant. Like that's how my brain works. But the advantage of writing things from the laptop is that I get to expand the playing style beyond what I can normally do with a guitar in my hand. Yeah. 
And that allows me to write a lot of stuff that challenges me. It certainly challenges Mike because um, this is a lot more, I mean, it technical than say stuff that after the minor did or even my old band, The Realm Between, right? Like the, it allows me to really like expand what yeah. what I do. But that is just how my brain works. I, I write all my stuff from the laptop because I know like what I want it to sound like. I just figure out what tuning I want to use, which is another great thing about like doing primarily YouTube stuff as opposed to like live gigging. Yeah. Because it's like, I want this one in drop A flat and I want this one in D standard six string and I want this one to be drop tuned to drop E, you know, stuff like right. that. Like I get to pick and choose how I want the music to sound and it doesn't all have to be like, well, if we want to go touring, we have to do the whole thing and yeah, drop yeah. D so that we don't need seven guitars sitting in the back. <laughs> right. You know, that kind of thing. But <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that's how and then I generally gravitate towards like a main component. Right. So in this one, it, it was like using using like major triad structures and going outside of the scale. Right. That's probably like um sort of augmenting it a bit. Yeah. So say like um Phrygian dominant is like technically a major scale because it has a major third in it mm -hmm. for all the theory nerds out there, right? <laughs> um but <laughs> you can pivot to like a <laughs> you pivot to like a B flat major, which isn't inside of that scale, but the way it relates to to D you can find it like in the D minor scale right and yeah. just stuff like that like relating different modes and stuff and it and centralizing it all to like our tonic point which is D yeah and that's what I went in I'm like I want to change I, I want to go through as many scales as I can and relate it all back to our tonic center which is why like um Jeff, <laughs> what's what Jeff was saying about the first <laughs> solo because like <laughs> the first solo is all about like jazz harmonic theory kind of stuff yeah like the the two chords in the background are mainly just bouncing between like d7 and b flat major seven yeah and my mind was like i want to go through as many modes that just have those four notes but all the other notes are different <laughs> right so you have some scales with like eight notes some scales with six some scales with seven right and i just want to change that as much as possible so it sounds as chaotic and push pulley and like it doesn't feel like you can actually rest inside of the solo yeah yeah like it doesn't it, feel like it has a home it feels tense right yeah because that that's like part of the narrative structure that i'm telling through the music because like i'm not thinking about lyrics while i'm writing this the instruments yeah. Right. So so when Jeff tries to sing along with it, he's still he's still in the like the the structure of the chorus because it's the same chords. <laughs> so when when he wants to sing a note that he he's familiar with out of the chorus, it doesn't line up with the lead guitars. <laughs> and that it, it, it clashes. That, <laughs> yeah, that sort of clash is like I, I can understand why he would be like this is infuriating <laughs> and so obviously the natural result of that is like let's just copy and paste it <laughs> again and you can sing over that part since you're already familiar with the chords you know <laughs> that's crazy so like but i'm curious like what do you think about like so i get that uh, you know there that you guys are we know when you're composing and with the guitar you're thinking and i know i've, I've seen your youtube channel which is awesome um it blows my mind because i am like probably more like jeff i don't really know a ton of theory i know enough to be sort of well i don't really know hardly anything <laughs> but um but uh but i'm always intrigued by like just you know virtuoso level guitar players that can do that and so i get the 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 idea of wanting to just you know play outside your boundaries and do in and, and experiment basically and and fuck around with all these different types of ways of, of approaching your music but when you're doing that like i have to imagine you have like a concrete like kind of a i, I don't know an emotion a feeling that you want that music to convey is, is it like that or are you are you really just 
you know, trying to see like what you can do experimentally with the song structures. I, I definitely go for like a centralizing theme. Right. And that's like the, um, cause the chorus would be a centralizing theme. Yeah. Right. And it's just D major to B flat major, right. You're using two major chords in the midst of all this chaos and like really fast drums and really just nasty first riff and yeah. the pre-chorus and all the crazy augmented chords and all that stuff diminished licks you know whatever you want to say like it always <laughs> resolves into those those two major chords that yeah. go back and forth right yeah. and and that feels like you you've wound up somewhere right. in peace so the there's a centralizing aspect and then there's all the parts you can build around that, right? And the 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 whole thing is how far away can I go, especially with this song, is how far away can I go and still pull it back without feeling like I've completely lost the the whole emphasis of the song. Yeah, yeah. Right? So, I, and there is always, at least when I write original music, right, um, there's always a centralizing theme that you try to pull back to or gravitate towards yeah. or like you're anticipating moving to right tends to be my thing and the um the stuff that's outside of the boundaries is a lot like um lead playing and stuff like that like yeah most, certain transitions most, and yeah yeah you know most people who play lead guitar can do you know three strings per note up a scale and down a scale and stuff and it's like how do i how do i break apart that like generally right you you pick up a guitar and you just know you you just play a lick right it's yeah. in your muscle memory you just yeah. have that yeah like how do i take the mold of everything that i feel comfortable playing and just make it so incredibly different that i i really have to sit down and just you know really put a lot dry. of effort <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, dry, you know? yeah. this, yeah. I, mean, this was, I mean even when we were filming the music video right we're not it's like mo most music videos were miming the song but even that was a workout i mean me and mike left there like <laughs> you know like our, our hands were just tore up it was crazy i, How many I times might have gone beat? beetle <laughs> <laughs> how many times did we go through it that day i don't i don't remember i want to say eight times yeah oh, something God. like that yeah like and... we, we each did an individual performance and then we did a uh, one together and then phil and i did two a piece so yeah maybe six times but yeah. well, still we that... three together we did three together because he got yeah. nine because we had three cameramen Right. Oh, and yeah. we oh he, nine, he wanted the he nine, nine shots. Nine, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Nine <laughs> shots of the whole thing. So we did nine where we did three collectively. And yeah, I think me and you did two individual shots and then one shot together, if I so remember. The, so that's like nearly an hour and a half of the most vicious just I mean, on my just hand ever. The whole time. <laughs> Dude, because because I, I, I asked Phil one night, I said, Do you have the the pro tabs for this? He was like, obviously, and I'm kind of like, I'm like, if if you're down, like, you know, can you send it to me sometime? I'd love to try to pick apart some of these riffs. And he's like, sure, sends it right over. And I'm sitting there just like, what the fuck? <laughs> you know, you know, I got a couple riffs coming along, but for the most part, it's 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 well beyond me, man. Like, you know, but but even just hearing them playing their electrics uh, for the the shoot, uh, I mean, I, I hear it, you know, in between takes and stuff. Uh, and it just sounds phenomenal. You guys don't even need amps. It's just, it's just, it's just great. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, That's yeah. usually how I practice at home too. Is just no amp. I need to hear and yeah. feel every note that I'm playing with no distortion. That way, I know assuredly, like I am playing what I'm supposed to be doing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So Jeff, uh, what what was the process like for you to 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 mold the lyrics for this song? What, oh, what, were, you, what were you thinking with there? um i think like there's there's maybe two aspects of it uh for me one is like kind of making melodies and rhythms and stuff work uh and then after and then after uh you've got a taste of what phil <laughs> is thinking you know, yeah, the intention yeah. 
it, but it's, it's a very thoughtful song. And I'm kind of like, I want to take that as like a respectful, you know, challenge. I want to, I want to meet that, that level of respect. You know, I want to, I want to be thoughtful about this. I want to follow a theme. I want to, I want a story, you know, uh, which is not always what I, I've gone for. I mean, it depends on the project, but you yeah. know, you know, you know me from Speed God. I mean, that was let's get drunk and scream. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and it was the best, right? But yeah. like, but it wasn't. Um, and I am short selling that a little bit too. There, there's a little more thought in there. Well, but, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but like, no, I, I wanted, I wanted to, um, I, I wanted to uh, come back into doing vocals again. Like, you know, it, it's been eleven years at least since I've released anything that I've worked on. Right. Um, and I wanted to challenge myself. I didn't want to do the same things that I was doing before. Uh, and one thing I'd never done before is sing. Um, and I, I mean, dude, screaming, no problem. I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it for my kids' bedtime story. I'm totally comfortable with it. <laughs> they might not be, but, right. but I would. Right. You know, but for some reason, singing in front of people like scares the living hell out of me. And so I was like, great, let's do that. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, because it's that's how you grow, right? Yeah. Um, so, you know, there, like I said, there's two aspects of it. There's one just making melodies work. And, and I tried to be humble about it where it's like, if something's not working, it's probably my fault. I, I I've never done this kind of thing before. Right. Right. Um, right. You know, this is the first track you're ever going to hear me sing on, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and, uh, but then the other side of it was just trying to be thoughtful in terms of the lyrical themes, um, and so uh, that was actually a question I wanted to ask Phil during this, but you you asked him, you know, did you have any emotion, yeah, uh, in mind when you had certain parts? I mean, you know, especially towards the end of the song, you know, it gets a lot more uh, drawn out and melodic. And I have to imagine because you know, even as a guitar player at a, at a different level than these guys, but like I do have an intentional. Or at least I have something in mind, you know, for for a feeling behind a uh, part that I write. Whether it goes there or not with the band is a different thing, but right. I have it in mind, right? Yeah. Um, so I don't know, dude. It it was just a wacky experience uh, <laughs> for the last couple of decades. If I was putting lyrics to songs, odds are I wrote a good portion of that song. So yeah. I haven't been able to be just the vocalist uh, too often. And with this, I was kind of like, that's all I want to do. You know, uh, I yeah. want you guys to give me music and I want to give you a vocalist perspective on it and then like us to find what we like uh, in the process of making it work. Cool. Well, you know, I, I just want to say, Jeff, that you're um, uh, I don't think I'd ever heard you do melodic vocals and mm -hmm. I thought they were great. Um, and I was Thank very you. happy that they weren't. So no offense to any of you guys that dig some of the bands that do like kind of a their in the same sort of genre that you guys do, you know, where they've got technical progressive, but then they tend to have like what I call boy band vocals. Oh yeah. <laughs> they church it up. Yeah. Where it's overly oh. melodic and, and compressed and shitty. And I'm like, ah, oh. so dude, you just boiled <laughs> some blood <laughs> in my realm of the world. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, I, I can't get into it, but your vocals didn't do that for me. So I was so thankful. <laughs> no, I, I appreciate that. I mean, it, it's not even like the most intimidating part of it for me in general is trying to find my voice and putting something out before I think I've found my voice. Like, I, yeah. I don't know that this is my voice or isn't, but that's what I did here. Yeah. And that's why I love it. I almost hope that it's not my, my, my voice because then this is even more unique and special. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, and I think so. like when you're saying that it's, it's, hard like you can scream all day but when you're trying to like sing it's um difficult like just you know because i, I would think it's it's vulnerable if you're gonna sing you gotta be able it's to exactly carry, right. carry that tune and you gotta carry that note and you can't be flat or sharp uh otherwise it sounds like shit so <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 i mean i think you're exactly right though uh you are vulnerable you know yeah. if you I, I've, I've always had a hard time with this, this question or this thing where, you know, somebody will come up to me and, and usually like in past bands when I was touring full time. Uh, and they're like, can you, can you give me pointers on how to scream? Like can you teach me how to scream. And I'm kind of like, I really don't know what you mean. Yeah. Because like, I'm not a technique scream. You know, I, I hear, 
Well, I'm not going to get on that road, but <laughs> I, grew up in, <laughs> I grew up in uh, like hardcore and punk and it was yelling. Yeah. Yelling and screaming. Right. Uh, yeah. and, and it wasn't until I heard uh, Josh Goggin from uh, I heard him from Norma Jean and like Ludacris, but uh, yeah. in the chariot. And like that made it a little more metal and like I kind of started getting more into metal and but I, I stayed that hardcore vocal, the hardcore vocal style guy in metal or in metal cool. Right. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and I think that that served me well, you know, it's differentiated me from a lot of the people around me and the, uh, the, the, the churched up <laughs> metal core scene, <laughs> you know, which is a very real subgenre. <laughs> <laughs> it is very real. I mean, I lived in that place for a while. All right. <laughs> Crazy. <Yeah. laughs> so, uh, you've, you've got this one. Is there any plans to do more music? Are you guys thinking about working together some more? What, what's any ideas, plans? I mean, um, uh, Mike and I obviously have, like, we have a, a rough schedule for the year. Mm -hmm. We want to put out at least six songs. Um, at least two originals um maybe a third um jeff said he's open to doing more vocals and i'm fine with him being on if he wants to be on awesome. um, but we haven't i mean we're we're f from our next um because we want to do at least two months because when you're when you're dealing with like an algorithm like youtube <laughs> or spotify yeah. Yeah. or something you want to be consistent right and our our next two songs or video game covers which kind of references you know like our metroid prime video and stuff and just things that mike and i have in common that are generally you know not too bad i can find the melodies online and stuff and yeah i tab those out transpose them to guitar and then i get to kind of write a rhythm around it which is the most fun part is reimagining <laughs> yeah what it could those, be those kinds of melodies and stuff so those are a bit easier um to put together obviously me and mike like a lot of the same stuff because i grew up watching him play gamecube you know so <laughs> it's just like you know that kind of stuff's there um the the and plus days? you don't and plus you don't get copyright claimed on video game covers oh really so not only are they oh, easier yeah. <laughs> not only are they easy to do but they're safer um, <laughs> nice. to put on youtube and spotify because generally unless you're sony um they don't put yeah you know, <laughs> unless you're sony. like nintendo and stuff like they don't put claims out on their on their music on their original soundtracks so when you cover it like you don't you, you're um, not sharing royalties you're not getting claimed you're not getting blocked in different countries like our lamb of god cover is blocked in certain countries because we have a copyright claim on it which sucks because it's our second highest view video, you know, oh, but man. you know, and that's just kind of the way the music industry seems to be right now. So yeah. you have to kind of play around it. Yeah. You know, and video games are, are, are no notable. Like people know them. They're part oh, yeah, of popular for sure. culture. For sure. So there's something to get you like get, garner you some gravity to yeah. get people to look at you. And while also still being, yeah, and and just to get the you know, and still be a fun project for you guys, and be um, creative, right? Because you get to take something you know, and then say, "I'm going to riff on this thing and make it my own." And yeah, make it cool. And it's by the so way, incredibly fun. <laughs> I, I forgot to mention that uh, that Lamb of God cover you guys did was fantastic. By the way, so I forgot to. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Cool. I re-listened to it today. I forgot how good it was. I was like, wow, I can't believe we did that. <laughs> well, well, after I got the song from Jeff, I was going back because I keep seeing, you know, on Facebook when Mike posts a video and I check it out. Um, and I, But I totally forgot about it. And then I went back a couple weeks ago and I was like, shit, I, this is damn good. And I meant to put a note out of my fucking notes here. <laughs> Failed. But you brought it up, so that's good. <laughs> hey, no problem. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> Oh, uh, crazy. So I know, Phil, you said that, um, you know, you can pick and choose tunings and such so that you don't have to play live. Do you guys think you would ever like perform any of this music in front of folks? We we initially were given an offer earlier or sorry, late last year to play a show. And we're like, 
okay, let's do it. Let's go and play like four or five songs. Yeah. And the communication you could tell was starting to get a little iffy between people. And then it just kind of fell through. So like we were at a point ready to play a live instrumental set. Oh, wow. But after that, yeah. there's really not been plans as of yet. Okay. But it's not but we, question. We both have, um, we both have drop tune pedals too. Oh yeah. I have one. So of that those. kind of alleviates yeah. some of the stuff. So like we have, if we have one song in like drop A on seven and another song in drop G, you know, it's as simple as dropping it a whole step and you can fucking you know, drop G. The fuck? <laughs> yeah, <that>? dude. <laughs> well, okay. So, um, the, Me- Metroid was in G, I believe. Really? Yeah. Metroid was in drop G. Um, <laughs> uh, our, our Lydian lesson that we had that, that had a section at the end where I used the pedal to, tune my guitar down to drop e <laughs> um and the song that we're looking to release in march the whole entire rhythm section is dropped to drop e wow so crazy. it's just yeah it's low but our i mean um joe santangelo right mike yeah. yep yeah i mean he he just does such a phenomenal job with mixing i don't I don't feel scared to tune that low because I know the way he's going to tighten it up. Like it's just, I mean, it's going to blow it out of the water anyway. Yeah. And I believe Joe, like with his stuff in grave bloom, he plays in tunings that low. So he just, he knows where to go with that kind of stuff when mixing it. So I am just real comfortable with him handling our stuff. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. I saw grave bloom um, last year. Uh, for the oh first yeah. Time, finally. They were awesome. At the sanctuary, uh, I can't. It was. Uh, I think it was the token with finality. I think it was one of the three. Okay. Episodes. But yeah, kicked ass. It was. You know, <laughs> it's again one of those people. You know, it's fun. Uh, like, uh, you know, you guys. I've seen you in person years and years ago, but mostly keep in touch through Facebook. And so Joe, I he'd been a Facebook friend, never really met him in person. And then I was like, finally got to meet him. Like, hey, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's, although I feel bad sometimes because. I suck with fucking names and somebody will come up to me and they know me. They just fucking know me. And they're talking to me. And I'm like, who the, in my mind, I'm going, who the fuck is this? <laughs> Dude, I had somebody come up and hug me uh, at one of uh, Ivy shows uh, at one point last year. It was, oh, hey, Jeff, 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 Jeff. And just came up and gave me this big hug. And we were backstage. So it was like a, somebody working security. And I'm like, oh, I don't know who this person is. <laughs> and they know me to the point that they're comfortable to run up and hug me when I haven't seen them in probably years <laughs> oh crazy actually uh, funny is that uh i never i didn't meet phil in person until we filmed this music video oh really <laughs> yep. wow. wow yeah i mean <laughs> I, I mean we hung out with mike a lot and and, and the after the minor guys uh, yeah and then i know that we we printed merch for the realm between uh i think on, on one or two occasions uh and so like phil was always in the talks you know and then chris finnison was always big enough. Uh, uh, Phil, he's like, dude, dude, Phil, you think I'm gonna do fucking Phil? And I'm like, you're fire finger finison. So like, if you're saying it, then it's got to be something crazy. And then you hear what he he sends you, you know? And it's yeah. like, okay, yeah, the 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 legend is true. <laughs> and the uh, hair is glorious. <laughs> that's awesome. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I thought it was funny because we got there the day to make the do the video with uh crew productions and i was like hey phil by the way hi <laughs> <You know? laughs> right <laughs> oh that's awesome uh so how was it working with uh aaron over at akuro i love that guy but how how was the how was the video suit for you guys it was oh, dude. so easy and so quick nice like for how many times we had to play the song yeah we were anticipating it to be like all morning all afternoon and it was like I think we were all home by like 3 p.m. It was that quick. We got there at 10 in the morning and we were done. Wow. Awesome. Yeah. What, what did we film for like maybe two or maybe three hours? Yeah. yeah something two like and that. a half. <laughs> right nice. in the middle. Nice. Nice. Yeah. 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 It, it, it mean, was easy. Super pleasant. I mean. He's free. in. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> mm. not free i'm saying like like free to do what you want right 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 yeah yeah it's 
I mean, he's just great. And then the product speaks for itself, obviously. Yeah, it looks fantastic. I mean, it's awesome. The lighting is good. I yeah. mean, the black background and all the different shots. I know Jeff was like enamored with like the shot during the, I don't know, bridge ish <laughs> portion. I feel like there's two bridges in the song, so I'm not entirely sure yeah. how to address it. Um, but it's <laughs> like the, um, it's near the end, right? Where the chords are like huge and then it goes into the five section. Okay, right, yeah, that yeah, part yes. and the camera's over yes. my shoulder, and then the oh, yeah, 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 the um, the focus like goes from the back of my head onto Mike's face and stuff. Mm -hmm. And you said that was a cool shot. I, I love, I just put, I, I, I thought it put the brothers kind of like as a unit somewhere. Like, it, it I don't know, for some reason, it just it, it, it stood out far more to me as like the brothers for a moment. Like, that's the heartfelt moment to me, yeah, right. <laughs> Yeah, me and Mike all our lives have been told to play together. And like he joined after the minor. I joined the round between when I was 18. And then we both played in those respective bands until 2020. And then I mean COVID shut everything down and we were finally like, okay. <laughs> what are you, let's, do? <laughs> you know, we might as well do something. Right. <laughs> you know, and that's how that's how we birthed Coddle Bros music. That's cool. After years and years of being told that we should play something together. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, the uh the pandemic did spawn quite a few things. This podcast is one of them. This, oh really? Yep. I Oh, very cool, like, man. <laughs> you know, because I shot a bunch of shows and stuff, you know, and mm -hmm. then couldn't shoot any shows. So I'm like, the fuck am I gonna do? And then uh I'd been listening to there's a um, fuck Matt. Uh, I can never remember his last name. Uh, he's a singer for, oh shit, a Canadian band, um, Cryptopsy. Um, and he, oh does, yeah, I know who you're talking about. Yeah. He does that Vox and Hops podcast. Yeah. Oh, I cool. was, <laughs> yeah. So I was, you know, during the pandemic, I'm, uh, working from home. Um, me and my wife, Brenda, I go out for morning walks, you know, so we always listen to something, either a book and I started getting into podcasts and then box and hops, you know, is this, uh, you know, metal dude talking to metal dudes about, you know, beer and music. So I'm fuck, that sounds perfect. <laughs> so, <my life>. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, they, they even had like these, uh, virtual hangs, like thir first, uh, thirsty, th thirsty Thursdays, um, and so I did that and stuff. And so then uh, I actually had him. He was like the third guest, I think. Uh, but I was like inspired by him. I'm like, fuck. I mean, not that it's, um, I mean, he does a great job. He's like, it's a professional thing. But I thought, you know, fuck, I can, I could do something like that. So anyway, that's how it's, it's do you have fun doing it? And if you do, oh, that's yeah. worth doing. Yeah, that's what, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, um, just like the concert photography thing, it's all about, for me, um just raising awareness about local musicians that i think are like i, I hate to say worth everyone's worth their you know you you're, you're, you're making art. yeah you're 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 worth that but i mean for me it's just people that inspire me or are you know i kind of remember it was it's 30 years ago when i was in a band but i remember what that was like i remember what it was like to be you know creating your own music and that it's kind of cool when you can uh, when somebody else is kind of championing your cause. And so I, that's what I've been trying to do. Um, and that's what I like to do with the show. So there you go. <laughs> we all appreciate you very much. <laughs> and we see you doing that nonstop. Too. <laughs> oh yeah. You know? And it's not just music either. I mean, like you, you I mean, you're plugged into Michigan culture yeah, well, and, in so many places, you know, whether <laughs> it's covering the four elf parties at the best yeah. brewery in this state. <laughs> <laughs> uh you know or or you're going out to shows or, or you know you're talking about actually I, I i think i think one of the times that you and i did speak with each other since speed god's last show is you were giving me recommendations on parks oh yeah it's like right. like like parks throughout the state to, to yeah. check out like it was just maybe a private message or something but i mean yeah yeah like well, if i well, i thought i saw you and ivy at a brewery because we met up at like uh not homes, homes? Not, nice. not it wasn't uh, homes it was another one over on the next to the taco side. joint yeah, yeah, I, which has changed names a couple times, but yeah, and you guys were just but that, that place is still there. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I remember that. 
Were you there with your son as well? Uh, I might have been. Uh, I know Brenda was there. Can't yep. remember who else, but yeah, it might have been. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but that was that was a while back too. I yeah. Mean, I don't you know. But <laughs> no, it's <laughs> it's cool. I mean, I I think one thing, uh, one of the things that drives me to want to do this kind of collaboration is uh so like we all have moved on and, and have more responsibilities at this point in life phil i know you have a kid you know i have a couple of kids you know so so band world kind of looks a little bit different right for people in general because of you know like covid and everything right. you know and, or, or inflation or <laughs> you know it pick your problem and there's right a, you, know, right. <laughs> you could fall under it but uh <laughs> but uh I kept thinking back to like, well, what, like really specifically, what is it that you think you miss about playing music? And I'm kind of like just being lost in like this, it sounds so hippie, but like, you know, get, I want to get lost in this vibe. Like I want to get right, lost in, right. in something, right? Um, and and the Coddle song, this Coddle song is not the first one that I'm messing around with since, you know, starting to play around music again. But like, it, it's definitely one that kind of, kind of gave me that old school dad smack up side of the head where it's just like, Hey, you can do this again and you can do it different. Uh, and, and it can, it can be something different to you now. Yeah. And the cool thing to me is that this is also the very first uh, time I've ever recorded my own vocals. Um, like, like Joe mixed everything, but you guys recorded your own guitars, right? Yep. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. Guys recorded, and I think Phil did the, the uh, drum programming. Um, I don't remember. Did you guys play bass or program bass? I programmed it. It's programmed just, it? Yeah. Yeah. So it's like I, the only things that we're like really, really playing are, you know, are the things we are holding, right, <laughs> right. you know, and then the song. Um, and, but sitting and, and coming up with parts, getting lost and trying to make something work, you know, uh, performing and everything right here in my office that has been life changing to me. Yeah, and I'm standing next to the, the one of the places I hate being the most, <laughs> you know, because we're here all the time. Uh, but you know, maybe I sound old or something, but you know, being able to do this ease of file exchange and like you know, you can write music, you can be in projects virtually now, yeah, uh, or at least it's easier to do it now. Um, it's so and, much easier, and it's fast, <laughs> dude. It's fascinating to me. It I is. mean, literally, we were on Facebook or something and decided to do a song, and then a song popped up, and now you're all working on this song that turned into a thing. Like, Yeah. Well, you know, it's fascinating. Yeah, I am fascinated by that, too. I, I think it would be fun to, like, just dive in to understand that better because I just find it, it is. It's, it, it blows my mind because, you know, way, way back in the day when I started, that that would – there was no way to do that, right? There was, like – a cassette tape in a fucking little boombox. You had to chisel it right onto the laser disc. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) See that? No. It's a little flat. Yeah. It's too late. It's on the stone. Fuck it. You can't add to it. You can only get flatter. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Oh, man. That's so awesome. So, uh, you know, I'm curious about, like, you guys have created this awesome tunes, but... I like to go back into the Wayback Machine. Like, how did you guys get into music? What, like, what was the, um, what were those kind of moments that like spoke to you and said, I, you know, I want to play guitar or I want to play guitar and do vocals. Um, let's start with Mike. So, I honestly had no ambitions to play guitar or even get into music at all. Like, I've always <laughs> loved music. My mom used to quiz me in the car and be like you know, put on banana one one five and be like, who's this? Like, <laughs> uh, that's tool or this is corn. I would just, I'd be able to just recant music. And then I recall going up to Alpina to go hang out with my cousins for a, like a week or two. And they're the kind of guys where they're like, they're so competitive with each other. And for whatever reason, they chose to learn guitar. So <laughs> when I went up there, I was like, well, I want to learn now. So <laughs> They gave me this crappy acoustic and I learned how to play like some white stripes, some stone temple pilots, uh, maybe Nirvana and Beatles songs. And then fast forward a few months and I was playing system of a down and corn. And then 
a year later I was playing an entire Lamb of God discography and then Holy you know crap man <laughs> 10 years later I finally decided to you know go out on a limb and try and audition for a band and that's when I met Nick and Dan from After the Minor and you know story kind of goes from there wow that's awesome man fuck yeah and it was just <laughs> like now my cousins I don't even believe play music anymore so it's just <laughs> it's it's been one 22 years at this point now oh shit that's awesome <laughs> uh phil how about you what was your journey um so i mean my dad and mike's stepdad played guitar all through our childhood he was in cover bands and he shreds I mean, yeah he he did the whole metal thing he was you know out on out in bars covering metallica and megadeth and awesome his brother shreds stuff. too yeah, Steve is good, and um, Chris plays too, right? That's our uh, cousin? cousin, second yeah. cousin, something like that. But I mean, my dad's side of the family plays, uh, and I can still find pictures of me as a kid, like holding my dad's like Eddie Van Halen ripoff <laughs> guitar. Nice. Um, but it at eleven, I got a drum set. Um, because when you're an 11 year old boy hitting things just sounds <laughs> yeah, like sounds a lot of fun. <laughs> um, but actually the, like, um, the pivotal, the pivotal point for me from when I went from like, I really just want to play music was when my buddy got, um, and we were 12, fourth grade, I believe he got guitar hero three legends of rock. <laughs> And we play through the entire campaign. And like, I'm hearing some songs I had heard before right. from, you know, my, our parents, you know, playing them or whatever, like, you know, raining blood by Slayer one by Metallica or, you know, the trooper by Iron Maiden, stuff like that. <laughs> but like, you're playing a game that's based on the guitar. So it like forces you to listen. Right. I was like, shoot, I want to play guitar, you know, pick up my dad's, <laughs> you know, Dinky Jackson and play it. And I was like, Hey dad, how do you play um one by Metallica? And he's like, hold on. And he leaves for like two minutes, goes into his closet and like puts a and justice for all tab book in front of me. Flips <laughs> oh, open to shit. one teaches me, gives me like a five minute lesson crash course on how to read tab. Oh shit. And it was all over from there. <laughs> I mean, it was like I was oh, learning yeah. one by Metallica, Master of Puppets, and I mean, and then um, and then I was learning like the Trooper by Iron Maiden or Man. something, and it yeah. was like, hey, Dad, like, how did they, how do harmonies or like Master of Puppets, right, has that harmony in the clean yeah. section? I was like, how did you know how do they do this? And then he was like, well, you know, there's these things called scales, and then i i just nerded out and i've been learning theory ever since then and they got me a task cam 32 track oh, so shit. it's like a, wow. a digital yeah yeah digital DAW, like a, yeah. a physical DAW essentially yeah. you know and um i would just record stuff you know like i was recording music because i was like dad i want to play harmonies and he's like well write something and i was like challenge accepted you know I'll write something <laughs> and and so I, you know, I use Audacity, which is like a free software. Yeah, I, I, yep. Oh, that. we know. Yeah. We know. <laughs> yeah, just listen here, all that, <laughs> all that, all that stuff, you know, I was using that and I can still go to my dad's YouTube channel and find the first music that I posted. That's mine. That's awesome. You know, and just from there, it's, that's why I write more music than I play because I just found that niche and like, I can listen to someone and take that inspiration and write it down. I don't necessarily have to just like go through and, and I have learned a discography. I've learned um, edge of the earth. Silosis. I've learned that oh, whole yeah. entire album by ear. I just sat in my room as a high schooler and just learned the entire album by ear. The fuck? Um, kind of <laughs> like, <a> Lighter, <laughs> isn't, that God album. isn't that peers? Uh, uh, isn't a guitar player? Uh, shit like it's they're swedish right aren't they so english it's english it's josh middleton oh okay it's, where uh, was i think of like like pierre nielsen or pierre nielsen i thought he was in that band but 
you can think of something else. Maybe. Yeah. It sounds familiar, but yeah. I don't know where he's from. But Silosis was my big, like, inspiration throughout high school and still is today. There's a lot of Silosis influence inside of Creation Transcended. So, oh, cool. Yeah. That's kind of my, <laughs> kind of my story. <laughs> awesome, man. Very cool. I think, I think, Chuck, you're thinking of Scar Symmetry. Scar Symmetry. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Yep. Her is Swedish. Yeah, Peer, Peer, yeah. Uh, Jeff, how about you? Uh, what was the question? <laughs> what was your <laughs> what what uh what what was your early motivation to get into music, uh, guitar playing, singing? I don't know if you play other other instruments. I mean, if you could play a guitar, you could play a bass, but I don't know if you could say you're a bass player. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, uh, no, I mean my 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 primary musical interest is been guitar since i was i think like 13 years old oh cool i thought guitars were cool my parents got me something from a friend at the church kind of thing and um and my fascination with like electric guitar probably started there but i was obsessed with bands like some 41 and incubus nice uh, and i think somebody forgot one of the van halen greatest hits albums uh, on cassette in my car <laughs> and i literally that was the first cassette i've ever burned out like oh, it was really? the coolest like oh yeah dlr until the day i die man like <laughs> you know what i mean yeah you know, the ice cream man it's, it's oh, just yeah. <laughs> you know uh but though i mean you know mike einziger from incubus uh the guys from uh sum 41 and then eddie van halen like i tried learning their stuff i learned how to read tabs not tablature <laughs> i learned how to read tabs uh from uh from those those three bands primarily and then just wrote I mean, I've always been kind of like a kid lost in the dark <laughs> with my <laughs> instrument, you know, and I'm going to try to find a way out. Right. Yeah. Um, so, like, I, I don't know scales. I, I'm pretty sure I play scales, <laughs> but I don't know what they are. Uh, or at least, you know, I don't fall out of them too, too often. But yeah. um, no, I just I, I I enjoyed being able to play along with the music that I was listening to. Yeah. And that was the instrument that I had. I wasn't a singer. Uh, you know, I, my brother played drums for a little bit, but it wasn't something he got serious about. So there wasn't a drum set around very for very long. Um, so that was just my way to participate in this music that I was listening to. Um, and then it wasn't until I was probably uh, maybe like 15 or 16 or something that I tried any sort of like screaming vocals. Um, I remember the very first time I ever screamed to music. Uh, it was, uh, do you remember the, the Christian music festival called Cornerstone? No. Yeah. It's, it's something they did out in Illinois. There's a, it, the main one was out in Illinois for, I mean, several decades. I don't think they do it anymore, but randomly a couple of, uh, years in a row, they had two smaller locations for those, that, that festival. And one of them was near where I lived in North Carolina mm -hmm. and went out and <clears throat> watched uh, Norma Jean play. Uh, Josh Goggin had already left Norma Jean. Uh, I, I think they had a guy that with them named Brad or something. But it was the first time that I saw like tight jeans, like the scene metalcore yeah. thing, which yeah. I have no problem admitting that's the route I went, man. Yeah. Uh, but it was at that festival that I got to watch this band called Beloved, um, which is like a melodic hardcore band, huge influence on my old band, uh, Gwen Stacy. Uh, and then come to find out one of my childhood friends was a guitar player in the oh. band. So like there was this, this connection that I had no idea was there, but like yeah. I had already fallen in love with this, this band, but beloved was playing and I was there with my cousin uh, and we're like getting amped and amped and amped. And then it comes into this real uh, popular spot. It's like the tag, the, or whatever is like you know we were born for battle and i remember just crawling up on somebody on the front row and just screaming at the band just you know we were born for battle and that was the first time i literally ever screamed along to music and i was just like this is my fucking life <laughs> you know what i mean like from now on everything else is like yeah he's a screamer that does this other stuff <laughs> you know um no i fell in love with it there uh and then as a teenager i started bands we started playing shows i met other bands some of them toured so i started touring and then awesome. it kind of just went from there but i mean i think the biggest thing for me is that the the 
the guitar gets me through my my really crappy times it's always there for me <laughs> like so so i will i will always love uh whatever guitar i have available to me awesome um so that that's definitely where i lean for the uh the emotional strength <laughs> that's cool that's cool awesome man so like what um you know i've kind of got it into like where you guys started but what do you what do you think is the like the key motivational factor for you right now to to want to keep making music um we'll start again with mike what, what's what's motivating you today that to want to do to make to make music i think just the dynamic of making music with my brother like he's always there he's way too smart <laughs> when it when it comes to theories like an alchemical just genius <laughs> with, yeah. with theory and whatnot like above my my comprehension but um when he gets stoked for something i get stoked for it and then when he sends a product over you know we can mull it over and i just think the fact of learning new music challenging oneself with what you can do yeah that's that's such a big motivational thing for me it's just like i love that challenge it's fun to see the end product happen and you know when other people enjoy it then you know it feels awesome to see other people get as stoked as you were cool cool phil how about you um i mean the a big reason is it's just fun <laughs> i've always i've always been a, a composer i would consider myself a composer before a guitarist because i just i writing yeah. music is that fun would, to me i would agree um, but also like i i see what i can do as a, a god-given gift you know like i i like mike compliments me a lot i don't know how i got this good like he he i was going through some um stuff with like having to get my house like demolded oh. and stuff like that as we were preparing for this music shoot mm -hmm. mike labored for like two months over this song and i like picked my guitar up for a week you know and like <laughs> all right let's hit this start at half bpm and then work up and, and like mike nailed it <laughs> and i nailed it too and there's like there's no reason really why i should be that good except it you know having a a god-given gift that lets me be this good yeah and i feel like to not use it right would i mean Hell yeah. it's Hell it's yeah. just one of those things it's like I, if i have it i have to i have to use it in some way and just like seeing the you know the few people who really listen to it and enjoy it and the finished product and like people like jeff and joe and aaron like when they work with me and mike they're like we love working with you guys. We love what you send to us. You know, we love listening to it. We love putting our art to what you guys do. I mean, that, I mean, that warms my heart just yeah. as much as, you know, actually making the music. That's awesome. So I think that's a big piece of it for sure. So awesome. awesome. Uh, yeah. I, I think yeah. that I, well, I was going to say, I think that the, 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 um, the ability to, to under, Man, how am I trying to say this? Like the 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 ability to speak the language of theory and like to to recall it, like it's not a big deal. Like it's part of it is your tool, it's part of your tool set, is is the reason that I would be I, I would say like jealous, you know, or inspired, <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh by people like Phil. I mean because it is another language i mean literally right like yeah, yeah i mean yeah. quite literally yeah. uh and and to have that at your disposal it, it's to me it's not really any different than like you know i see stuff behind you chuck like you know gear that you can pick up and, and you just you have it you can now do something with that because you have it you have practice to you have, you know work yeah. on that that craft uh so it's really interesting to me when i meet people like phil uh who who can recall that kind of thing in that sense because it it, it, it it truly is foreign to me like you know you, you say it i understand the english words that you're saying to me but like they don't <laughs> yeah. mean anything to yeah. me right like Jeff, oh you're in this mode you're in this key you're in this scale you're in this whatever i'm like i don't sweet <laughs> you, know, I move on. you make me sound like i'm way better at something than i am <laughs> no, 
it's it, it's it's just really cool and and to to get back to your question i mean like you know it, i think both of them i think both of you guys have said the, this at some point in your response but it really is about getting to try new things uh or to try them in new ways i mean this is the longest song i've ever done uh which is a challenge in itself lyrically because i i'm not the repeats the same kind of stuff lyricist that's just not what i'm drawn to uh, i mean I, I think you know the the chorus is the hook here kind of a thing but in a nine minute right. song you know how much time does that take <laughs> yeah you know um but uh yeah what drives me to do it i don't know i i don't i don't want to go down i don't want to take up the, <laughs> the whole time but <laughs> you know i'm in a, i'm at a point in my life where i'm uh reevaluating the place that different activities and different uh um uh, different energy sinks uh you know yeah. what what role they play in my life uh and and then also was i missing anything uh yeah. for a long for a long time i you know i've been going to, to school for a very long time uh and so i've been playing music during that and i kind of forgot about what i get out of being a musician you know processing emotions uh yeah. you know exploring new sounds and interests and then again my favorite thing about all of this is the collaborative uh possibilities i mean it's it's nothing to collaborate now at all there just has to be an interest and good communication right which is challenging for a lot of people but, <laughs> but like it's not been an issue here like we were not every week reporting on the work that we did for an entire year on one song it was guys i have no idea what to do in this part no clue I'm going to keep working on it. You know what I mean? And, and, and a month later, it's, I tried this thing. I think I like, Oh, I, I think I understand what you're getting at. You know, get the notes better or, or, or can you hit this one on this part or something? And I go do it again and we like it. You know, it, it's just this, uh, like iterative process. I mean, we, we could have had this song done in a couple of months, probably. I, I know I did. I put the vocals down all the way up through the first solo um and the reason we ended up having actually yeah i remember this now because the reason that we ended up having uh this discussion where we did make a small change in structure to the song uh, is because i just went and <laughs> sorry about that that's all right um <laughs> Like I, I I did the first two and a half or three minutes of the song in one go here one afternoon. Like they sent it to me and I'm trying to understand the song structure. I'm trying to under I'm trying to get find my anchor points in the song. Yeah. Uh and for whatever reason, getting behind the microphone and doing the first two, two and a half, three minutes of the song just spilled out. Like the lyrics, the melodies, the patterns, everything. It was so instinctual to me. And then it was a hard brick wall, <laughs> uh, but like pleasantly so, right? It, it'd yeah. be truly, and and I've learned so much, you know, going through this experience in, in many areas, like, you know, again, recording vocals, writing interesting lyrics for nine minutes instead of two and a half minutes, like, you know, <laughs> uh, or three and a half, whatever. But, uh, but more than anything, it's that it's been fun growing as a musician and i don't know the best i don't know a better way of doing that than collaborating with other people so that's cool it, to, to me it's 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 i want to say a lot of stuff and i want to say it in really fun ways with a lot of people awesome that's kind of where i'm at <laughs> <laughs> that's cool man that's great i love it i love it well hopefully you guys will uh, you know there'll be a couple more tunes you know with all three of you together uh if not i know the brothers will be cranking out awesome tunes so it'll be you know definitely be stay in tuned on the on the youtube site um i want to thank you guys so much for being on fans with bands i uh, really really appreciate it i've got one last question for you and that is oh, yeah. pineapple or no pineapple on pizza phil Ooh, pineapple on pizza all right mike pro pineapple pro pineapple jeff yeah, I don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> now, now that's kind of a that's kind of a cop out answer. It, I, I love both, pineapple? but I'll I'll I don't I don't sit around thinking about pineapple on my pizza. <laughs> but if you're gonna put it on there, I think you should at least grill it and then put it on there. All right. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> what about you? Which one are you? 
I'm a hard no pineapple because oh. I am not a sweet and savory guy. I like mm -hmm. savory. I like sweet. They the two should not meet in my opinion. <laughs> so. Honey baked never, ham. Honey baked. I'm. I don't like it. I, I prefer just what? ham, smoked ham, as opposed to. Don't put any honey on there. Don't put. Yeah. Do you like sweet <laughs> cornbread? Although I am intrigued to try because I, you know, I've been asking this question for a while, and there's um. Uh, some folks have mentioned, and I don't know if any of you guys like this, but it's jalapeno and uh, pineapple on pizza. And I'm I'm into I'm, it. I'm sort of intrigued oh, yeah. by that. I'm sort of intrigued because it's might, good. Yeah, I might be I able might, to get down with that. <laughs> I might be the kind of person that's probably going to eat mm, any pizza. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, me too. I mean, seriously, yes. But like if somebody's throwing some pie down and it's got pineapple, I'll just pick the shit off. It's fine. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <it's okay. laughs> awesome. Well, guys, thanks again for being on Fans with Bands. Appreciate it. Thanks for having thanks us. so much. Yeah, yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, hell yeah. All right, guys. <laughs> All right, you guys take care. See ya. You too. Good night. Many thanks to Mike, Phil, and Jeff for joining me on this episode of Fans with Bands. I very much enjoyed talking with these guys about their new song, Creation Transcended, as well as the potential for more collaborations. Each of these guys are phenomenally talented and inspiring musicians. If you haven't heard Creation Transcended, check it out on the Caudill Brothers YouTube page. It's a fantastic progressive metal tune that will have you just screaming for more. Seriously, get on it. See the show notes for all the details and links. Bands are nothing without you, the fans. Purchasing music and merchandise is critical to their survival. If you can help out your favorite bands, please do. If you're in Michigan, consider following the Playing in Detroit Area Tonight and SE for Southeast Michigan Music Facebook pages. They are fantastic places for fans and bands to support each other and share our combined love of music. Thank you all so much for listening. Be sure to hit subscribe on your favorite podcast service to get each and every episode of Fans with Bands. Spread the word by rating the show, telling your friends, telling your neighbors, telling your family, telling your priest, tell everyone, and leave a comment. We want to hear what you think. You can keep in touch by following us on social media. This is a Life in Michigan production. Until next time, be well and kick out the jam.